Hi, I'm Bruce Gehring, Superintendent for Leander ISD. And I'm Trish Bodie, President of the Board of Trustees. And we're here today to take some time to talk about the concerns that we're hearing in the community about our high school literature book clubs. Dr. Gehring, we've had a lot of comments. Can you tell me kind of what is the current situation and what is the district responding to? Yes, yeah, so as part of our English language arts adoption this past year, we do have new book clubs in our high school classrooms. Um, these are opportunities for our students to read extended selections of books. Um, there are 15 books on each of the book club lists, um, and they get to make choices from those selections. As part of our process of deciding what goes on those lists, um, we really feel like we misstepped in reviewing some of those materials adequately. As we entered into that process, we got hit by COVID, and we did not do due diligence in making sure that that was appropriately reviewed and those books were selected. So we're taking this opportunity now to um, listen to our community, and we're looking very carefully at all 140 titles that are in those book club lists. We are, have more than 70 of our community members and our staff members working together in reviewing every one of those 140 titles. And should they decide that that material is inappropriate for the age and grade level that it was selected for, then those materials will be pulled from those lists. So the lists that are out there, or that were circulated earlier, what happened to the books that were on those lists? Are they still in the classroom? Those books have all been pulled from our classrooms. There are, none of those books are in the hands of our teachers or our students at this time, pending their review. Now, as they go through the review process, if the team decides that they are appropriate, then we're putting those back in the classroom as soon as possible. So when we hear the word appropriate, help, help myself, the community understand, what are you looking at when you're looking at appropriate? We're really looking at the content and asking the question, would we want this material in my own personal children's hands, um, depending on their age and their grade level? Um, and not just me, of course, but of all 70 of those folks who have volunteered to be involved in that process are asking that same question. When you said, wait, there's something going on, I remember the district coming to the board and saying, this was wrong, we are moving forward, and here's, here's the correction steps we put into place. Was that in November? Yes, on November 5th, we came to the board. Dr. Benz presented to the board the process that we'd been through and explained why we believe that that process was not um, as due diligent as it should have been. And he also laid out this process of review for the all 140 titles at that time, and that's what we're working through right now. We've been through two full cycles, um, but we have more cycles coming as we prepare the rest of those books. I believe we have an agenda item up at our board meeting where we're gonna hear a report. So what are the the next steps that you see from the district that you're gonna to bring to the board? Yes, so we have put it on the agenda for March 25th um, for the board to have an open discussion about where we are. Um, we will bring an update to the board about the process, about the titles that we've reviewed and about um, the outcome of those reviews. Um, and then we'll just kind of lay out a plan for the rest of the semester to make sure that we can get all 140 of those titles reviewed um, by, by the end of the school. So we still have some community members who are coming to speak at board meetings. Can, can you help me understand what you're hearing is the concern that hasn't been addressed by the district? So we do understand um, that people are very passionate about their beliefs and, and as are we. Um, and I think that there is some misunderstanding out there about the content that we're willing to put into children's hands at what age. Um, and we want to assure the community that none of that content is available. We've had some community members come and read materials at our board meetings, and, and we agree that those materials are inappropriate, and, and we will not put those in children's hands. Um, those are not available to our students or our teachers at this time, um, pending review of, of those committees. I think it's very important to continue to listen to our community, hear what they have to say. Rebuilding trust and keeping trust is something I, I think that you're passionate about, our district is passionate about, our board is passionate about. You know, we've been talking about how we're listening to the community, um, but can you address some of the ways that the community can communicate effectively with the district? Yes, that's a great question. Citizen comments can sometimes feel um, 
a bit sterile in the way the comments can happen or, or the way the board can interact, right? When the board hears citizen comments, it's three minutes. Uh, the individuals come, they speak to us, and we don't really, we're not able to respond. There's not a back and forth conversation. So I would like the community to know that we're still listening. We can still hear. But in addition, you can respond or reach out to the board in several other ways as well. Um, we've got email addresses, we put those on, but we have our governance, our let's talk. That is the very best way to reach out quickly. And it's an email that gets your concerns not only to your board, but to your administration and team of eight. Um, I think it's vital for our community to know that when a uh, community brings an issue to the board, we might not be able to address it at that time because it's not on the agenda and we're prohibited from doing so. And we're also prohibited from having a back and forth conversation and really talking or digging into an issue. We get to hear you for that time period. And then there's behind the scenes that happens. And I think that happens for administration as well. Yeah, what's great about Let's Talk, that tool, is that we take all of our citizens' comments and we actually put them into Let's Talk ourselves so that we can track the responses that we give to those citizen comments, um, any clarifications that we make um, that aren't seen by the public necessarily, but are seen by those citizens who've, who've taken the time and the effort to come and address the Board of Trustees. So the next step for the board, what are we going to see happen at a board level? We have an agenda item we've talked about. What else is coming, what is the district preparing to bring to the board? So the administration is currently working on um, some draft board policy to address this issue of selection of, of literature and materials for age appropriate content in our classrooms. Um, and we will be bringing a draft of that to the uh, board committee, the policy committee, mm -hmm. so that they may start having those conversations with our attorney, our internal general counsel, um, and the board committee, and then that board committee will be bringing a recommendation to the board of trustees, hopefully this summer, for uh, that board policy that controls the selection of those materials. Well, thank you. I appreciate kind of getting an update and understanding the scope of how the district is addressing. Thank you.